What's going on guys? So today I'm gonna to dive into my screen here, do product research, show you exactly how I find products myself, what rabbit holes I go down to, and kind of see how my brain operates uh, from starting over 50 plus private label products myself. Okay, so the biggest issue I see, everybody's picking the same products and then three months later, uh, you know, they're all saturated, the market's tanked, uh, the price points are low, margins are slim, everybody fails, everybody loses, okay? so. This is a problem with product research apps. So you can find good products on there, but if you do find one, most likely there's 50 other eyeballs on that. So how do we find products creatively? How do we get product ideas that are unique and our own? I'm gonna show you a few cool steps of how to do that, show you how my brain operates, things to avoid, traps to look out for, everything like that, okay? So product research is a struggle for you so far. Make sure you watch this video. One of the biggest things that I know uh, within any Amazon business is that product research is the most important step of the whole thing. So imagine the Amazon business is a pillar and these are all foundational steps. Product research is the first one and the most important. If this thing crashes and burns, the whole thing comes tumbling down. You can't market yourself out of a bad product. You can't launch yourself out of a bad product. This is the most important step of the whole thing darn thing, okay? So let's just hop on my screen, let's get to it. Okay, so the tool we'll be using today is called Helium 10. You got Viral Launch, you got Jungle Scout, they all work. Everything I'll show you today, you can use them interchangeable with all these product research apps. Uh, so if you if you already have one, don't go buy a new one, don't have three product research apps, run it up a bill, save that for the product, save that for advertising, all that good stuff. But if you do need Helium 10, you wanna use it. It's one of my favorites right now. They continue to innovate. They continue to add more tools. There is a discount code down in the description you can use to save some money. If you're gonna use it, I will save money. Everybody needs a product research app. It just is super helpful. Okay, so we go into the Helium 10 dashboard here. This is what it looks like when you have an account. Um, you can see all these apps down here. Uh, there's a ton of them. If you want more information about all these apps, let me know down below. Uh, and this is something I can make in the future. But anyways, we're using black box here for Amazon product research and just try to stay super focused because I'd rather just go into a bunch of products here and spend all the time on that, okay? So you know how I was telling you about you finding good products on product research apps, but the issue is there's gonna be 50 other eyeballs on it. Uh, they can be saturated in three months, everything like that. This is where that usually happens in the product section of this, okay? Uh, so we're gonna skip this, go right to keywords. Why keywords? Because it's a broader field. There's a broader sense. We can get deeper into things. We can find more rabbit holes. And again, we're trying to get to a unique product that's, that isn't coming from a product research app. Okay. So that doesn't make a ton of sense right now, but it will in a couple steps. Uh, so what we're doing is using a product research app to get the noggin going. Okay. I'm not, I can't just go search on Amazon and find products. Like my creativity isn't that good. Okay. So I find like weird, cool looking product niches in here and then I go ahead uh, and then go down rabbit holes once I kind of discover new things and get the juices flowing, if that makes sense, okay? So it's creativity is something, it takes me a little bit to get into, uh, into that mindset, everything like that. Uh, so starting out here, search volume, we're gonna start with 3,000 to 7,000. So these are fields that are gonna tell us, uh, you kind of narrow down our product research, uh, you know, because there's millions and millions of products on Amazon, so we have to kind of narrow down of what we're looking for, give ourselves the best chance to succeed here. A monthly revenue I'm gonna leave alone because search volume kind of dictates that already. Uh, if we need to go narrow back in later, we can. Uh, price, we're gonna go $12.99 and then $34.99. So these things, take them with a grain of salt when I do this. This is just suggestions. These are ideal suggestions, something to get the, the brain going uh, for your sake. But if everybody's doing the same thing, then everybody's finding the same ideas. So maybe try to be a little bit creative uh, when you can and expand these fields. Uh, you know, there's pros and cons to both sides, right? So if I have search volume, um, you know, below 2,000 or 1,000, the volume for sales is gonna be a lot lower, right? Because the monthly searches per month is, is lower, so there's gonna be less sales overall for that niche. If I go too high, okay, our sales are gonna be higher, but the competition is gonna be more fierce. There's gonna be bigger competition up there that has bigger budgets. And if you don't have the skill set to get up there right away, you're gonna be eaten alive by the competition, just, just swallowed whole by the sharks. Okay, so we have to find the sweet spot of like, how can we get in with a, a new people uh, how do we get in with the big companies kind of sit on silence because the revenue is not worth it, but still build an empire uh, over the long term, which, you know, I'll keep giving hints of, of my theories, my strategies on this as we keep going. Uh, but this is kind of what we're working on. Same thing with price, right? $12.99 is kind of the, the lower of the high side or no, the higher of the low side. You know what I mean? Okay. It's the low side, but what we're trying to do is, is avoid the fixed fees of Amazon taking per sale eating into a bigger percentage of that amount, right? So if we have a $6 product 
and a $2 fixed cost, that's 33%. If we have a $2 cost for $13 here, I don't know the percentage, but you know it's less there, okay? Uh, $34.99, again, the pro to this, higher margins, uh, bigger, you know, kind of volume and sales because, you know, uh, each sale is a higher revenue mark. But the higher number we go for price point, the more expensive the product will be and the higher your first order will have to be in your second order, third order, if that makes sense, right? Because it's going to be your $60 product is going to be $10 a pop, you know, for raw materials where your, you know, $15 products for every $1.50 for raw materials. Uh, so you're going to have a bigger bill there. Something to think about. A review count. Uh, there's a lot more reviews going around with the Amazon these days. So I like to do 275 for max here, uh, just for the sake of, you know, making sure that we have enough room to wiggle with. Uh, I'd be comfortable anywhere around from 250 to 400, somewhere is, is a good range for this. We're gonna start with 275 and work our way up if we need to. Uh, review rating here. Uh, so this is something we could put 4.2 in if we wanna be more picky, find products that suck to make them improvements on. And we'll leave this out for now, but you can always come back and add it later. Again, mess around with these things. You're gonna to have to have, you know, a lot of ideas, a lot of quantity of ideas. Uh, so come back, get more ideas. And I'll show you kind of how to make a list for this and, and how to narrow it down later. All right. Uh, so we got review rating of 4.2. I'm going to delete this. And why it's important for 4.2 is because if it's 4.3, it's going to show four and a half stars on Amazon. Uh, 4.2 shows four stars on Amazon. So it's the highest. But this shows the lowest, if that makes sense. So 3.8 to 4.2, do, do this, just show four stars. And people just see that visually. They don't usually see the difference between uh, 4.2 and 4.1, things like that. They just see the half star, full star, all that good stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. Word count, I'm gonna go three here. So minimum of three. And why we do this is because we don't want a word count of you know just one or two. I uh, think it's like table, right? I don't wanna see a keyword like table because it'd be super broad. Uh, we wanna niche down, especially when we're first beginning. You know, two words will be black table. Again, too broad. Three words is kind of that perfect medium of like we're kind of niching down as more descriptive words. Uh, max, we don't have to worry about because you know, the, the more words there are in general, the less search volume will be because no one types out a bunch of words for that. So search volume actually takes care of that max limit for us. Uh, we go down here, there's obviously a ton of filters here. I like to keep it simple and then keep going down if I need to. Obviously categories we need to do. Um, so I don't like appliances here. Uh, I like baby, I like arts and craft. Uh, these things are just things I'm missing out. Doesn't mean you can't be successful and I've had students prove me wrong in all sorts of fields. I'm just saying in our ideal circumstance for a new beginner, uh, for someone just starting out, these are the most ideal categories to be in. The learning curve's less. You're probably gonna make a better ROI right away. Uh, you're gonna have less manufacturer issues, defects, returns, things like that, okay? So every category has its pros and cons as well, okay? Uh, so beauty and personal care. Um, yes, we can do that one here today. Books, no. CDs, vinyl, no. Camera photos, no. Cell phones, no. Clothing, no. Collectibles, no. Computers, no. Electronics, no. Grocery, no. Handmade, no. Health and household, no. Uh, home and kitchen, yes. Industrial kitchen, uh, music, no. Office products, patio, lawn and garden. Pet supplies, sports and outdoors, not today. Uh, tools and home improvement, yes. Toys and games, no. Video games, no. Okay. Uh, so we, go, we can go to shipping size here too. So if you're looking for small products, large products, things like that, I don't like to limit myself too much with this because everybody's looking for small products. Uh, we all can't sell small products. We have to be going into avenues that are a little harder because less competition is going to go into the harder fields, right? So people who aren't willing to take the next step, don't do oversized products, don't do the hard stuff, and that's where more opportunity lays, especially as we're getting... Uh, more competitive. I would say the opportunity in Amazon's never been greater, as in it's it's growing exponentially. More people are shopping online than ever, but there's more people doing this, and so we just have to take the next step. We have to treat this as a real business. We have to be detail oriented, everything like that, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm gonna do small, large, small, oversized, and medium oversized. Uh, let's leave out the washing machines. I don't want to sell those. Um, that should be good for us right now. We obviously need to mess with fulfillment, FBA, FBM, Amazon, uh, things like that. We can see all sorts of things uh, as well. If we need to, uh, I'll dig into some of these more if, if we need to. But you, you guys are smart. You can read uh, if you want to dig more into those. So we'll hit search right here. Uh, so we scroll down after we hit search. And the first part we see is stamped cross stitch kits. Okay, so first thing I think is, I don't know what that is. That makes me curious. That's the product I'm kind of looking for, right? I love that. We're going to open a new tab and keep open tabs and keep going. So we're again, quantity is important here. Uh, to make sure that we have ideas flowing and we keep just looking, 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 uh, and we just start big, 
go down. Okay. Dog leash holder for wall. No elephant shower curtain. I'm going to open this one up. Uh, I don't think it'll be a good product, but there's a lesson to be learned there. Uh, whoops. A lesson to be learned there uh, about shower curtains and that kind of niche. Uh, it's, it's very curious. You can probably run with it if, if something like that kind of spurs you. Again, we'll talk about that here when we get to that tab. Um, no, if you're seeing a bunch of brands like Bear Republic here, obviously you stay out of the brand keywords. If you're seeing a ton of them, go to exclude keywords. You know, if it's Nike, Adidas, things like that, hit those out so you get more uh, search searches for things that you can actually use. But going down here, heart pillows, decorative throw pillows, kind of same thing with the, the shower curtains there. I'm going to open that up just to kind of go over that one here. Uh, Easter, birthday, uh, birthday gift cards, um, obviously not gift cards part, but the birthday is okay because there's birthdays year round. Uh, Easter is obviously just one part of the year. If you like seasonal products, great if you have experience with them. Great. Uh, but most people starting out, it's not great to have a product that you can only sell one time of the year. Uh, I like products for beginners that you can sell year round or at least uh, most of the year. That way you can actually uh, do inventory management better, not get stuck with a bunch of inventory, uh, learn year round and not just sit on your hands for nine months, things like that. Uh, hair tie bracelets for women, no. Japanese teacups, uh, interesting. Whoops, I'm gonna exit out of that so I can stop doing that. Chinese takeout boxes, blank credit cards. So products like this I avoid. And the fact of like, just think how generic these things are. How do we differentiate? How do we become different? We we don't. Uh, so it just becomes a race of 10 pack, then 20 pack, and then 30 pack, and then 40 pack. And then it just it just becomes saturated, everybody loses. Uh, so things I can't, you know, make different stand out or be genuinely curious about or have an interesting niche, I, I don't really care about it. Back sweet. Back sweet beeswax candle making kit. You know, I speak good English, um, very good. Or uh, beeswax candle making kit that is interesting. I'm gonna open that one up, go back, dragon incense burner. No hair tool organizer, Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. Jesus, um, African American shower curtains. No sky glue pattern paint roller. Um, no two. Cardinal wind chimes, Valentine's, baby milestones, Hello Kitty stationery, Hello Kitty no, Hello Kitty no, keep going down, no sink splash guard, we might as well take a look at that one here, so I'm just trying to get a bunch of ideas here guys, and then we're going to keep going over them, each tab I open we're going to go over uh, together here, cheesecloth table runner, okay that's my kind of product, let's take a look at that one here, um, go down paper, Pipe insulation foam tube, uh, D Waltz, Mac Miller, no Grey's Anatomy. My girlfriend loves that show. I hate it. It's so dramatic that it drives me wild. They play on every human emotion, but let's just not get off the topic there. Uh, Stray Kids photographs or photo cards. No, no. Uh, page three, we see a bunch of pages here. Bread baskets for serving. No. Cereal bowl candle, candle no. Reserve table signs. No rare oh, full scent flags. We have quite a few tabs here, so let's try to find one more. Uh, color pop, keep going down a little faster here. Uh, sorry if your eyes hurt. Rechargeable advanced mini shopper. No, uh, let's go to six here. Let's just see if we can find an idea real quick. Michael Jackson dugout one hitter, uh, chicken soup for the soul, wall stencils, ceiling fan, hanging bird bath, uh, flower wrapping, headlights, glass oil burner pipe, football table runner, new girl. Merchandise, black gift box, cactus shower curtain anime, felt desk pad. Interesting. Let's do this one. Okay, cool. So we have a bunch of ideas here. We see a bunch of tabs. That's what I like to do it is get, you know, pretty much how many tabs you can handle and start there. Uh, I've made a little Excel here. This is just for light keeping track of things. And then I'll kind of give you the steps of what to do next once we have a bunch of ideas. Okay. Uh, so what we're trying to do is find a bunch of ideas. Uh, what I don't want to happen for you guys is you just look up two or three products and go all the way down the line with them. And then uh, three weeks later, after you looked at supplier prices, things like that, they're all failures. And then you're like three weeks have just gone, vanished. So we're going to find multiple, multiple ideas and keep narrowing them down. So we always have backup plans. So that way we're not wasting any time. Uh, we always have a product we can work with, everything like that. Okay. So we see we have stamped cross stitch kits uh, right here. Let's start. So we see the first two are Disney, um, everything like that. Stay away from brands. So I don't really know what this product does yet, uh, but I know I stay away from brands. Anything with Disney in it, I'm, I'm out. 
Uh, anything with like Nike, things like that, stay away from that, they'll shut you down. Uh, it needs to be kind of generic, no trademarks or copyright uh, names inside uh, of your listing here. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Helium 10 extension. So when you get Helium 10 or Jungle Scout or Bar Launch, you can get their extension, just download it from their uh, website there and it's going to do a cool thing so this isn't to be all end all for stats they're just estimates but it saves you quite a bit of time because you can see the market as a whole really quickly kind of see what's going on and uh everything like that to know if you need to move forward uh so we see the top ones here uh with seven thousand that's the disney one though three thousand two thousand seven thousand four thousand five thousand so you know sales aren't crazy high uh, but they're good to start with. Again, I don't want you going into dog eat dog fields and just getting obliterated, uh, you know, at thirty thousand dollars a month product ranges. Again, if you want to do that, great. Just know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, you know, based on my experience and kind of my theories and how I teach uh, a lot of people, I rather start products like these because Amazon continues to grow. So we get the number one spot uh, for these lower end products. We have less competition, higher profit margins, uh, less marketing budget to get into. Uh, and everything like that gets a rank number one spot and then you know as the years go on if a five thousand dollar a month product two years three years probably a twenty thousand a month product because amazon again continues to grow there's so much more room and opportunity to grow uh, for sales online this is just the beginning we're still very very early i'm um, speaking from experience here some of my favorite products were just like this back in 2017 2018 that i continue to grow and have little to no work to do on them and uh, they just keep growing in, in revenue per month uh, on Amazon. Okay. So back here, we go to review count. Kind of first thing I look at, we see, you know, mostly under a hundred here. This is a really good sign uh, to kind of, you know, this is a, a new kind of unique thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, this guy because I need to figure out what the heck these things do. Uh, I'm going to open up the 5,000 guy too. So I'm going to look through here. We see 90 ratings. Um, looks like maybe it's like, um, like a sewing thing or crochet thing for a wall canvas kind of thing. That's what it looks like. Okay, sweet, pre-printed, HD printing, why choose us, embroidery, needle, everything like that. Okay, this is kind of cool. Uh, crafts have become very popular uh, since the pandemic. So let's keep going, cross-stitching print. All right, uh, this is BSR if you guys are not familiar. Uh, this is some actually really good data, but this will take kind of an hour to explain. If you want more on this, just say BSR KM down in the comments below, and I'll make sure to make a video more on that, but I don't want to make this an hour long, uh, longer video, okay? So we're going to avoid that for now. Let's keep going down. Again, I'm just kind of looking to see what this product is. We have to understand what this does so we know what kind of angles we can kind of get into the market with. Uh, yes, I just fluttered my hands around like a like a goofball there, but uh, keep going down. Okay, so good reviews for it. Uh, about 5,000 in sales for this one. Uh, interesting, I'm kind of understanding what they what they do. This is like a whole kit here. So this is a better understanding of, of what comes with it. All right, okay. That's something easily done. Sweet, all right. So this is a good idea. Uh, and then I kind of like to, to see more about this field, right? So. What else comes with it? We see a book here, embroidery. Uh, this is pretty unique in itself, but you know, this is something that I like. And so what I would do is I would grab this guy, links to dive deeper on, uh, keyword phrase, what did we use here? So we used this guy, so if I exit out of here, cross stitch, okay. Sometimes you can just keyword phrase and product name can be the same thing, right? Uh, again, if you have a better name for yourself to kind of remind you what it is, fine. Uh, but this is what I like to do. Okay, so I like this idea, but I don't want to limit myself to just starting a product that is something I found on Helium 10 or any product research app. So what I would do is kind of learn more about the market, uh, learn, maybe I can make this into a better kit. Maybe I can add something to this. Maybe I can do something to stand out over time a little bit better. Maybe I can go into these, these products right here and go down to some of these other products, feature products related, just a lot of cross stitching. So there's a lot of competition for this already. Um, is it like a puzzle, which is kind of cool? So different designs that you stitch together like a puzzle. That's kind of really cool. Um, so the kit, it becomes more interesting because you can make whatever you want with the kit itself. Uh, so this is kind of the stuff I'm doing long-term, right? And seeing how I can add to it, uh, getting deeper into the market. If I go back here and I, Go ahead and start looking at all these different examples, kind of kits, home crafts, 
Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find you guys an idea of what to do. This one's pretty straightforward, as in like what this product is. Usually there's more ideas here. Uh, we see a, a beginner project for kids, so maybe we, we niche down in the kids area. So what I would do is I go up here for kids. See, we have different products here now, okay? So 310, 245, uh, good price points for these guys. Uh, we see just one, two, three. Uh, these are the same ones here. And then we get back into the adult stuff here. Okay, um, see another one right here. So I'm gonna look at sales for this one. We open this up. We can see search volume is super low for this, but that doesn't mean we probably, like look at this keyword, it's gross, it's long. It's probably not the best keyword for this kind of stuff. Uh, so we could actually use another Helium 10 tool to do this, but this has 5,000, 4,000, 7,000, uh, 5,000 for the kids uh, area. Uh, what we could do to find the, you know, this could be another tutorial as well, but we could take this keyword, go back to, to Helium 10, and then plug it into uh, keyword research, Cerebro, and it'll tell you the best keywords for that product that have the most search volume, that have the highest relevancy, uh, everything like that. I, of course, I have videos on that um, in other places, but yes, that's what I would do here. So this is what I would I start making notes here. Niche down other, other ideas. And yes, I know I'm very unorganized. I have, I have, more set standard excels for this but again i just kind of do it differently each for each time because i'm i'm just not an organized person uh, but if you are make this out use it make uh copies of it everything like that uh kids i want to put that down for kids look back into that how can we make the kit better what else do these customers want okay so we're going to dig deeper into that later everything like that but just for the sake of an example i'd rather just go rapid fire over products because you get more into my mindset see more examples which i think is beneficial uh, for all of you so let's move on here uh and we'll just keep learning uh, and figuring things out uh, so we see elephant shower curtain so i'll tell you right now if i just open another tab okay this is why i want to bring up the example whoops go to amazon here and we go to shower curtain so we know shower curtain is going to be a saturated product. Yes, yes, yes. But why I wanted to bring up this example as it loads is because we can start to niche down. So if we look at this product, the first one, organic, 711,000 per month, 350, 460,000, 385, 550. That's massive. That's almost a million dollars per month or half a million dollars per month. That's fantastic. Okay, so you're looking at me like, Cameron, I can't compete with someone with 14,000, 171,000 reviews. You're freaking crazy, okay? Yes, you are right. But in areas like this that are so big, we can niche down. So you can generate ideas in this in this way. So that's why this elephant shower curtain is, is it's weird. It's it's cool. It's a different design, right? So we see shower curtains doing a half million a year for the generic ones. We see 272, 819, 308. These reviews aren't crazy, right? We see the bear bear ones here. People like this kind of stuff. Yes, it's, it's going to be hard to find trends. You might have to have multiple products to kind of see what works, what doesn't, which can cause an inventory or, you know, a cash flow issue. But it's just something to think about. Uh, we only see 1,000 reviews here. Uh, or not, sorry, $1,000 in revenue, $7,000 uh, right here. Let's look at this one real quick. Um, but you see my example here. This is actually pretty cool. It's a four-piece set. Uh, we have the toilet here, uh, the bath mat, toilet mat, and the shower curtain for thirty-five fifty-one. And this is doing about eight thousand. So something like this, putting kits together. If you have more design-oriented or you have proven designs that work, this is something we could do. Uh, again, this is kind of outside the box, but just something I wanted to touch base on here. So going to the next one here, again, more examples, the better to kind of pick my brain. Same thing with throw pillows. Uh, I brought this one up just for the shower curtain aspect. Obviously, throw pillows. Uh, you can do um, do probably half a million a month too uh, for the right ones, but we can do different designs here. Uh, let's go to Japanese teacups. That's interesting. Uh, so we have tons of different tea. Uh, we see this one. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. I'm sure that maybe a different tea or just a design of it in general would be something to good to Google here. Uh, 762, 205, 84 for reviews. We see all sorts of kits here which is kind of cool. Uh, tea is a huge industry, uh, so it's something you can kind of niche down with, uh, go into to broader categories of tea, uh, get new ideas. Uh, so we see 14,000, 4,000, 8,000, 13,000 here uh, for tea mugs here. Um, reviews are still pretty low here. Okay, so let's just take an example. Actually, let's go back to that real quick. Let's take an example of 
some of the best selling ones the lower reviews so 205 337 let's get let's get these guys right here so these guys cst mugs designs are pretty cool we could probably come up to something uh, very similar that do just as well as this t here but i'm more curious of what we can add to this product okay uh, so we have these bowls that are similar very similar we see frequently bought together that means people who bought these also bought these at a high capacity so we look at these it'd be really easy the person who probably makes this d cups make these bowls so we can make it into a set um you know if you know a lot about tea you can add other things as well uh you can see these kettles here uh keep teapot kettle that's you know very themed like this so a glass one uh would be a great idea for that as well we know there's certain tea straws so i know there's you know yerba mate yeah yerba mate tea straws okay so you might not be the best cups for this but i just want to show you like this is what gets my brain feeling like we're in teacups, so I'm gonna look at more tea products. Okay, so we have the, the nice pottery of, of glass, teapots, uh, teacups we can create into a different set. We have certain tea straws that potentially could be a good fit for this as well. You know, a low add-on, but it's gonna add value. Uh, people get super serious about tea, um, and it's just something you should be thinking about. This is what I think about uh, every time I do this kind of thing. Okay, so reusable metal, tea infuser, uh, things like this. And we can just keep going down the rabbit hole, right? So we didn't find these straws or the pottery uh, for the bowls, the teapots on the product research app. Okay, we're finding it through here. Okay, we can just keep looking, keep looking. Uh, so we have your mate cup now. Okay, so you see where we're going with this? This is a special teapot. Sorry about the the um, infused there. This is something I do like to look at the products there. But we see the ideas are flowing now. So now what I would do is your mate cup. Okay, I'm very curious about this now. So we go to all departments, your mate cup. Okay, we're still looking around. I see 3,500 reviews, 4,000 reviews. Okay, so we probably know this is too saturated for us, but can we niche down in it? Can we can we add something in this market to the to market we're just looking at? Okay, so these this this is what I'm talking about here. Okay, so just keep going down the rabbit hole. I wish I could make this a six hour long video of me actually doing this, but I can't. I'm just trying to give you more ideas as much as possible. So we see a good amount of sales here uh, for these. Um, but yes, so that's kind of the T Avenue I take. Okay. So if you like this one, you can put it in here, uh, to look up later, uh, T products niche down. You can, you could write your ideas here, uh, put your links there as well. But for the sake of this video, let's keep going. More ideas, more ideas, more ideas. Uh, beeswax candle making kit. Okay. So we go down. So this is something I know nothing of. Um, I've, I've known people, uh, that make candles. And uh, they seem to really like it. it. Seems to be a great hobby. People get passionate about. That's always a good field to get into. Here we see different kits. Uh, we see this little crock pot guy here. Maybe something on the stove top you can make candles with. Yeah, something like that. Something that doesn't require electronics. That'd be good for a beginner. Uh, let's go to the sales for this one and see what's going on. Uh, so we see 4,000, 6,000, 4,000, 4,000 here. Let's get reviews. Uh, they're fairly low within our range here. Uh, research says search volume is about 5,000 here. Okay, so this is something that would take a good amount of work to, to learn more about. Okay, so what I would do is I'd open some of this stuff up, kind of see how it works, see what the frequently bought products are with it. Uh, as well, we have different essential oils. Ooh, interesting uh, for that as well. So we see the little, the little kit there to melt, mix. Interesting, okay. Very interesting. I read the reviews to see what's bad about it, what's good, what's missing, uh, everything like that. These ones look different. Um, wonder what's so different about these. They're like wrapped. Okay, interesting. So these are much, much different. Uh, they're just wrapped around long sticks of candles. Uh, here, we go down. So that is also something we could think about. I don't think they mix very well together, but we see there's a different whole niche for that uh, in general. Okay, uh, we go back. Did I open? So this is the third one we're looking at here. Uh, we see, again, these are the wraps again as well. A little different than like the, the pot. So the ones here are more of like, we're going to make a candle that's like melts over time. These ones are more the stick candle that, you know, like you have for Hanukkah, things like that. Uh, so that's something to think about. There's two different niches for that in general, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, what is also bought with this? So there's different designs bought with that. So maybe people who bought this one are looking for more colors, more designs, uh, more creativity for their kids and their family to kind of make together. 
Um, we see all sorts of ideas here, but we just definitely need something. Definitely not my favorite because I don't know a ton about it, but that's the thing. If there's something that interests you, you have a leg up. You can go ahead and, and dig deep of what the customer really wants, get inside their head. What can I add to this? What can be better? Read the reviews, everything like that. Okay, so let's exit out of that one. Amazon, seek splash guard. Okay, so very generic kind of thing here. Splash guard, splash guard. Let's see what the sales are. Something like this is, is kind of hard to make work uh, just from the fact of it's pretty generic. It's really easy to make. A lot of people are like, ooh, I can make that. That's not too hard to, to kind of get into. And we kind of want to avoid those products, but 25,000, 13,000, 90,000 here, review count super low. Uh, so this is something we're catching early, okay? So my only warning is something early like this. Yes, if you have experience, rush it to market. Rush it to market, get something good, uh, you know, dominate the sales, use a ton of inventory uh, to have more sales, get more reviews than everybody here. But if you don't have a ton of experience, take your time, read the reviews, build a higher quality product that's going to stand the test of time, something that has more utility, something that's going to be different than everybody else that's going to get drowned out, okay? Because that's what we don't want. We don't want to get drowned out, uh, you know, in, in, in 90 days for something like this. We see the four pieces, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's what we want to avoid. So what else could come with this? What else is it, you know, lacking? Is there something we could do better, okay? Uh, otherwise, skip it. If there's nothing, no ideas coming later, but this is something that maybe I'd, I'd write down uh, you know, and and um, think about it a little bit more because the sales on that were absolutely phenomenal and the reviews super low. What was that again? Yeah, it's 25,000, 13,000, 90,000 for something very simple, 12.99, 13.99, 17.99. The margins are fat for something like that, okay? So that's something to think about. Just know the competition is going to keep coming in. Be different, be better. Something that's going to last there for two or three years. If it's something you would see it is going to keep keep being a trend and not just go away in three months. Okay. So we're looking at cheesecloth table runner. Okay. So fancy stuff here, looking at it, 483, 13, 234 for reviews. Go here, 20,000, 8,000, 20,000, 13,000, 46,000, 48,000. Wow. Okay. Reviews are kind of higher up there, but the sales depth looks pretty good. There's, there's sales going on all the way down here. To I'd be curious what those products are the same here, but let's open a few of these up. So we see this, the price point's pretty low on that one, so you avoid something like that, try to add value, get the price point up. Um, but I do want to see. So there's a lot of variations, which scares me, because you're going to have a lot of inventory, because most factories make you order a certain amount uh, per variation, because it's not worth it to them. Uh, see a ton of variations here, too, that kind of scares me. Um, let's see. Let's go to this one. Let's see, there's a bunch of variations there. I'm out. Yep, I'm out. Nope, we're out. I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, last one here, felt desk pad. Oh, uh, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more of how to narrow these down later uh, and what to kind of, where to stop at and where to go to the next point. Just hang with me here. Again, these examples I think are the best way to get inside my brain, see how I started 50 plus private label products, what I'm looking for or not. There's no perfect checklist for this stuff. It's literally just experience. Problem is to get to experience. You have to pay ten to fifteen thousand failing products to get to get that. I want you to avoid that. Um, so looking here, we see this one forty thousand. This might be an outlier. This might not uh, be worth it. Uh, we see twelve hundred here, uh, forty thousand. I'll be the same product. Uh, so this one might be disgusting and something we want to toss away. Terrible idea, Cameron. Don't know what you're thinking uh, here. Six twenty six, twelve thousand. 4,000 things like that. I also want to hit it on the point again of looking down and seeing what the frequently bought products are, something we can niche down to. Is there something this is missing that we can be the higher end one, things like that. So we see computer stand right here, which is interesting. A keyboard we don't want anything to do with, uh, but this is where I go down the rabbit hole. So office supplies is where we're at now. So keep going down. We see the keyboard only now, so we're, we're already out of this one. Um, so let's click on, click on another product here. See if we can get any more ideas cooking. Okay, not a ton of stuff here to work off of, but this just makes me think, okay, there's laptop stands and there's all sorts of them. Is there iPad stands? Is there phone stands? Things like that. Like, you know, I do filming now, like, and there's things that I can record on my iPad, things like that, iPad stand or desk. Keep going down this route, so 52,000, so that's quite a bit up there. Obviously, when we're getting to stuff like this, 
it's going to be uh, pretty damn competitive. But again, going down the rabbit hole, learning more about these kind of office supplies, uh, what's popular, what's not. I want to leave you guys on a good foot here. We're going to find something real fast. Okay, so let's try to find, let's go down one more time. Phone stand for desk for recording. There we go, for recording. Well, that's super interesting. We've got 8,600 here. We see it connects to the desk. That's interesting. Uh, maybe we do a phone one and an iPhone one uh, all in one here. Um, the little light here. So we see a lot. The filming industry is definitely blowing up here. Um, what else would these people need? Okay, so thinking about that, what else could we give these people? It'd be a really good idea to think about. Um, let's go down. So we see we have uh, more keywords that pop up here. This is a great way to kind of keep going down um, the kind of rabbit hole for stand, phone stand. Let's go back a little bit. Phone stand for with ring light, video recording with light folder for filming, uh, phone stand, um, phone stand for bed. That's interesting. What is that? Um, 10,000 reviews. Dang, people really use this stuff that much? That's crazy here. Uh, let's go here. Let's keep going down this rabbit hole a little bit. And all right, so more of the same, more of the same. Okay, we're gonna leave on that note. Sorry guys, I couldn't find something a little better here, but you see what I'm doing uh, going down here just for the sake of the time of this video. I'll make more videos like this as well. But what we're doing is what I do next here. I didn't really like that the, we came across two good ideas. I want at least 10 here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to black box and I'm gonna keep going down here, messing with settings, uh, keep going down the list here, coming up with more ideas, going down rabbit holes, figuring this stuff out, making notes, right? When we're going through here, like what else could this be for? For kids, uh, what can we add to this one? Can we add to be premium and stand out for years to come as market saturates? Right? These are things I'm writing down. These are things I'm going to. But I'm going to get 10 ideas here. I keep going. This is something I come back to about two to three hours a day. I don't do 10 hours of a day. You just can't. Like your brain will get fried. The creative juices will go away. So just keep coming back to it. Uh, this is how I work. Everything like that. Once you get 10 ideas, guys, you're going to want to go ahead and you start narrowing it down. Okay, So when we do deeper research on here, start thinking about ideas here, then just keep going down come up with your favorite five, maybe down to three, then move on to the Alibaba part of it. Look for margins, look how you can make it uh, in, in Alibaba or any other supplier, right? There's tons of ways to uh, find suppliers and, and things like that. Um, and then guess what? If those three don't work out, you got seven more. You got seven more, that's the whole point of this thing, as well as making sure that you just be creative. Don't just pick a product that you found on product research app. But otherwise guys, that's it. Hope that was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments down below if that was helpful, too long, if I'm a little crack addict, sorry, I just had some caffeine. Uh, this one was is too wild for you or just all over the place. But this is why I do product research. I'm a little, little tweaker and I want to give you the most information as possible. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a like and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.